Hey, what's up, witches? Welcome back to Magic and Makeup. I am finally filming another pick a card reading for you. I know it's been a minute, but thank you for your patience so much. Hey, what's up, witches? Welcome back to Magic and Makeup with another pick a card reading for you. This pick a card reading is going to, it's timeless, but it's going to be roughly from, let's see, we're in Mabin right now, the season of Mabin. So I'd say let's just make it for, let's make it till Yule, December 21st, 22nd. Okay, so from now until around December. So for the next couple of months, what does the future have in store for you? We're going to talk career, love, finances, all that sort of stuff. If you guys, uh, if I really feel like some of the cards are speaking to me about love in particular, I will be drawing some cards for you there. So you picked pile number one, which is so let's get into your reading, shall we? Be sure to like hit and subscribe and hit the bell button for me. It would mean a lot to me. So you got the rune Iwas. I like this rune a lot. Um, this is about defense. It's about enlightenment, divination, spiritual wisdom. So a lot of you are probably going to be on some sort of journey or maybe you already have and that journey is going to deepen for you. Um, it's about developing your inner strength, your inner life, your inner world. So all things spiritual, you know, you're really going to be in like hermit mode. Um, and uh, singular. So maybe some of you who picked pile one are single right now at this time. D doesn't have to be for all of you. Hi, sweetie. Hi, my cat's just, my cat's down here. Yes, I know. Um, so key phrases, we have the wisdom of the ancients, uh, physical death and spiritual rebirth, tree of life, Transcending the physical plane, enlightened creativity, connection to past lives. So this is very much a divination rune. So there's a, I think there might be some of you out there too who are like kind of connecting to your spiritual gifts for the first time. Um, and a lot of people that I've been talking to have actually been going through that right now. And in a way it sort of makes sense. Um, just with a lot of things that are going on in this world, I think a lot of people are starting to kind of bust through so many different illusions, I would say, in society, <clears throat> um, in what's expected of them, in what's expected of them from society and from family, from themselves, um, all sorts of things. So this is a really good, really good rune for you. I really like this. Um, the information on these cards is on the back and there's also blank cards featured in this deck. So. If you like this uh, deck, I will link it down below for you. It's a great way to learn runes. So we have your Iwas, spiritual strength and development. So, Ace of Cups reversed, the Emperor. You know, that doesn't seem right to me. I don't want these reversed. I'm not gonna read them that way. Well, that came out reversed. Okay. So, you know, I don't want to read these in reverse. I'm just feeling like these aren't meant to be in reverse. So we have the Ace of Cups, the Emperor, the Five of Pentacles, the Eight of Cups, and the Queen of Swords. So, this is definitely about spiritual awakening, I think, through a relationship of some kind. It doesn't necessarily have to be a partnership. It could be a boss. Uh, it could be um, a work partnership, um, but it's definitely someone that is sort of a power figure in your life. It could have, it could be like a committed relationship, maybe a marriage for some of you with this five of um, pentacles here. Um, so the way these, the story of these cards come out to me with the spiritual awake, awakening uh, Iwas rune for you, we have the Ace of Cups here, so brand new beginning, which uh, might not necessarily mean a brand new relationship if those of you are watching who are single, but it could just mean a brand new lesson 
in love. Like you're going to be learning something here with this emperor source. Okay, we've got Taurus, bullheaded, stubborn. Um, the, this emperor figure, I hear tyrant in my head. So there might be, not for all of you, but for some of you watching this video, there could be some of you out there dealing with like a boss figure that you don't like. Um, it's gone cold. I think maybe it gave you fulfillment at some point here. Um, I feel like for a lot of you, this is relating it with work. Uh, and you're probably going to be seeking some something else. Um, and I want you to see how the cloak figure here is red, and he's also wearing red here. So I think the two of you might be mirroring each other in this um, situation. So I would ask yourself what you feel you're projecting, what you think they're projecting onto you, um, how you feel they're the tyrant and you're the victim, how you feel you're the tyrant and the victim. Really ask yourself those sort of questions. Um, journal about them. No shame in it. No shame in discovering the really deep-seated, deep-rooted issues that cause these sort of conflicts to come up. The more you go into it, the easier it'll be to pull yourself out of it and see it from a different perspective. <clears throat> and that's exactly what the Queen of Swords here, I think, is trying to show you. She's sort of holding her hand out here. and She's offering you a way. She's not saying, come here. She's basically saying, um, there's the road. Um, so I feel like there is a lesson here for you with some of you in a career field where um, you might be seeking new career opportunities, getting away from a, a work environment or a boss or some sort of figurehead that doesn't really hold true for you. Um, for some of you, this very much could be dealing with a marriage, very much so, or a committed relationship of some kind. Um, because obviously the Ace of Cups is all about emotional fulfillment and love. Right smack dab in the middle, we have two people who are not emotionally fulfilled, who aren't feeling the love, who feel cold, who feel cast out, who feel uh, like resources are scarce. You know, they, they've got tattered clothes. Um, the church looks warm and welcoming and inviting inside, but they're not headed inside. There's no door. They're kind of just walking by this church in the middle of the snow, you know, and it's pretty, pretty damn cold. So I feel like for some of you that you could be dealing with a relationship that's ending. And I feel like some of you are really just trying to decipher the truth of how you should approach it. You know, where's your truth and how you should approach the ending um, and walking away from it to find a cup that fulfills you elsewhere. Cause you got the cup here. It's missing right here. You want to go elsewhere. I still feel like you're mirroring each other. I do feel like you feel like this person that you're currently in this relationship with is sort of like the king of kings. Um, but at the same time, there's something that I feel like you might have just been going round and round and round. So I'm seeing a uh, like a carousel in my head and like you're on these horses, you're at, you know, child's play, but pretty soon... <clears throat> you're going to get bored of that ride. And I feel like you guys, uh, maybe the two of you, your partnership, the person you're in this relationship with, have been on this carousel and this ride for quite some time. So let's clarify here. What do we got here? So we have the Page of Swords, the Judgment card, and the Seven of Cups. Yeah. So again, you're learning how to communicate your truth. You're learning how to step inside of yourself and find your spiritual truth and to lift your own self up. Uh, and you have the seven of cups here. And I feel like right now you're just kind of choosing how to do that. You're sort of choosing how to walk and move forward. Like, how do I talk to this person? You know, how do I break up with them? Essentially, what's a good way to do that? Truth is, there's really no good way to do that because breakups suck. No matter if you're the breakup -er or the breakup -y, they suck. No one likes them. Um, for those of you who are dealing with kind of a career aspect here, because I'm really picking up two different storylines in this, in this card reading for pile one, um, you want to learn new things and you want to have sound judgment and you want to choose a career that's going to leave you emotionally fulfilled. And 
basically what I'm hearing the universe tell me is that you have options and it's okay to explore those options. I think you just need to give yourself permission. Same thing for um, storyline number two. Those of you who are in a relationship here, um, you have options. You know, don't, don't feel like you're settling. So, might be something you guys might want to consider. If you feel you're settling, maybe explore those feelings. Um, or if you feel like you have a, you know, a great partnership, you have an emperor here, you've, maybe you've had some things happen in your past that make you feel cold or that it left you out in the cold or made you feel abandoned, you know, maybe explore how you might be self-sabotaging. Um, I feel like for some of you who might be single reading or picking this pile, um, I don't see any bad things headed your way over the next couple of months um, until Yule. Um, I feel like you're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of good times being single. You know, you're going to really awaken into your soul. You're really going to awaken into who you are and blossom during this time if you're single. Um, yeah, that's what I'm getting for single career and couples who pick pile one here. So let's get some clarification here. Um, So these cards just sort of wanted to come out. It's important right now to take a step back and spend some time alone. Instead of placing your focus on another, now is the time to give to yourself. So, oh, look at that. Yeah. So I think pile one, no matter what is going on with you, whether you're single or you're in a relationship or you're you know, in a job you hate, um, this is what you need to be doing. You know, don't beat yourself up. I just heard that in my head. Don't beat yourself up. Don't be hard on yourself. It's not a matter about being hard on yourself. Don't be over, overly critical. You know, we don't always get things 100% right. Um, but it doesn't mean we're wrong just because we're not always right. You know what I'm saying? So I think you need to go in go within, you know, be in your cocoon. And that, that's what this rune card here with um, spiritual development and enlightenment and like vision questing, I think is about for you. Um, so I think you just need to kind of check in a little bit. Um, a message for you. I'm thinking of you this very moment. Your love fills me with light. I love you. Now that's beautiful. Now, I feel like this is Definitely something some of you needed to hear. I think if some of you are wondering whether or not it's a good time to exit a relationship, maybe it's gone cold, but you really do love the person, you're just not sure if there's a way through to the other side, through the coldness. Um, help is available. You just need to ask for it. Okay? Help is available. You just need to ask for it. All right, pile one. That is what I have for you. That was really, really splendid. I'm very happy with what I'm seeing here. Um, I hope this helps you, and I will see y'all on the flip side. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Hello everybody, welcome witches. You have chosen pile number two. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, hit, and subscribe and hit that bell button for me with me a lot. And without further ado, we're gonna get right on into your reading. Okay. So for those of you who picked rune number two, you got Hagalaz. So you got hailstorm, disruption, distress, storm, setback, hidden blessing unexpected uh, recovery from a crisis finding the hidden blessing transformation and accepting nature's power key phrases unexpected destructive forces forces beyond your control crisis with a hidden benefit a blessing in disguise unexpected change uh, 
Seek the clouds silver lining. Don't count your chicks before they hatch. Okay. Okay. So in Huthark runes, we're going to say this is sort of like the tower card <laughs> because it kind of is. It even looks like a tower. Um, okay. So let's see what the cards have to clarify for you about that. So tower cards aren't always bad. Okay. Now, I really don't feel like I'm meant to read these in reverse, so I'm not going to. Okay. All right. So, I feel like if there was like a tower card moment for you where you had something terrible happen to you, maybe you lost your job, you know, maybe the this pandemic really threw you through a shitstorm and like a hurricane type of shitstorm um, over the next three months. <clears throat> Excuse me. I see this as a good thing that's going to, it's sort of like taking away old things to make room for new things for you. So if you lost your job, I think you're going to get a better one. You know, if... You know, recently in the Pacific Northwest, we had some fires. You know, if you lost your home for some reason, um, insurance will maybe help kick in and you'll be able to get a home that is uh, better for you. So uh, maybe it's in a better location or, or something like that. There is happiness here at the end of the tunnel, and I do see that in the cards uh, that clarify your uh, Hagalaz uh, Futhark rune here. Um, you have the Ten of Swords, so um, to me this card always sort of represents betrayal or treachery, um, but it's also the, kind of the ending of a cycle, right? So, you know that saying, uh, the final nail in the coffin? You know, so maybe you were kind of dealing with something or someone and something finally happened. It was like the final blow you know, maybe, you know, in a boxing match, you know, you've been going at it for a while with this person and then they finally just went, bam, gave you a left hook right there and knocked you down. And that was like the final blow for you here. So this card represents the final blow. So whatever kind of treachery or betrayal or pain you might have experienced from a person or situation, it's like the ending of it. You're at a, you know, number 10 to me suggests the end suggests the end of a cycle. Uh, you have the Queen of Cups and the Ace of Wands, the Empress, and the Three of Pentacles. Um, so this is all about uh, you, essentially, standing in your power, standing on your own two feet, being in touch with exactly who you are, and seeing the reignition. Um, and to me, Ace of Wands always sort of represents a reignition of the passions. A reignition of manifestation. It's very much the beginning of manifesting for you. Um, for some of you, you might be going back to school. You might be learning a new trade. Um, you might be embarking on a new career. Um, it could, for some of you, it could be about a new partnership, um, a new romantic partnership. Um, but for for this pile here I'm feeling that through the pain and through the suffering that you've recently experienced or you might be experiencing either with a person or a situation it's going to bring about you standing on your own two feet and in your power and it's going to make you feel really really good I don't see it as making you feel scared or lost or alone or like you don't know how to handle anything so I really feel like this for you is going to be uh, truly a blessing in disguise. Um, so let us clarify just a little further. I'm gonna use these ones here. Oh, good deal. So clarifying the cards here, we get the three of pentacles again. So you have it here and you have it here. Uh, you have the nine of pentacles and the king of cups. Um, so what I'm seeing here is the fact that this comes up twice <clears throat> really also signifies to me 
to let you know, people watching this pile number two, that your family is going to be okay. Your family is going to be all right. Your business is going to be all right. If you're business owners, your business is going to be all right. Um, even if you have to rethink the way you do it and maybe move your business more online rather than like a store location, go ahead and do that. Your business will be fine. Your family will be okay. Um, and th this is you, um, again, in your power. So I want you to kind of look here. Queen of Cups, the Empress, Nine of Pentacles. These women are hella independent. Hella independent women. Um, which is awesome. Which is exactly the kind of person you want to be. You know, you don't want to be dependent on, you know, your uh, significant other for everything. You know, it's all right to be dependent on them. You know, obviously partnerships and marriages, you know, have things like that, you know. But, um... I think you need to maybe manage your expectations around what you expect from a partnership to give to you. Um, there might have been some disbalance or some unbalance in that, um, and that could have created this um, Hagalaz ruin, this tower moment here that sort of brought this foundation crumbling down that you thought you worked so hard to build with this person, created a lot of tension, a lot of conflict. You felt betrayed. Now maybe they're out of the picture. And now you have your family and you're kind of like, where do I go? Where do I turn? What do I do? And the universe here is saying, don't worry about it. We got you. That's the whole message of this reading. Don't worry about it. We've got you. Your family's going to be okay. You're definitely going to be okay because you, you being okay shows up three times by the power of three times three. You also get the three of pentacles twice. So to me, that is like, a super important blessing for you to really hear me on right now. Um, the universe for you really has your back and it's very important that you know that. Um, you are going to be coming into touch with your masculine energy. If you are a woman watching this, you are going to be kind of getting in touch with your masculine energy here um, and kind of doing like daddy things. You know, maybe some of you have children that you're looking after and have babies and children who are still young. Um, so if you've gone through like a divorce or a breakup of some sort recently, then I would suggest that you're going to be just fine kind of doing more of the daddy things. Um, and if you're, if you're a male watching this, um, you're still getting in touch with your masculine energy here. Um, and the Queen of Cups, the Empress, and the Nine of Pentacles, I feel if you're a masculine watching this, masculine energy, there's a gateway and there's a doorway here for you. Um, it could be to the love of your life. I'm hearing that for some of you. Um, if you're a masculine watching this, uh, the balance might be coming not just through a partnership of some kind um, or through an actual woman, but it could be coming... Um, uh, through nurturing your own emotional body at this time. You know, if you know, you, you've obviously experienced something really difficult and through nurturing yourself and giving yourself some comfort by experiencing um, softer things, you know, more feminine type things, um, you're going to find a lot of self care in that. Uh, like take bubble baths, buy yourself some new bedding, Buy yourself some new fluffy pillows and put those on your bed. You know, doing like feminine soft things, if you're a man watching this, is going to really help you sort of get in touch with feeling like you're taking care of yourself in a new way that maybe you just haven't thought of yet before. You know, I feel like for a lot of men out there, um, a lot of you need to hear um, that it's okay to give yourself permission to take care of yourselves. I feel like a lot of men, um, at least at least in my experience, you know, I work at a barber shop in my day job and like I always see men like just go, 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 go. And it's not until like they sit down in my chair to get their hair cut where they're like, oh, and they can relax and take a breather and just talk to me about whatever it is they want to talk to me about. 
you know, not to their wives about their honeydew lists or their girlfriends about a vacation that they really are trying to plan, you know, which I'm sure they want to talk about. But at the same time, you know, I feel like a lot of men out there aren't really given the permission or given themselves permission to experience the softer things in life because they're just so busy with doing and going and like trucking forward and like I gotta do this I gotta do that and like this zoom meeting and that zoom meeting and my children need to be educated at home now and you know all of us are just like go 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 so I don't know why I'm feeling this message so strongly for you men out there but if you're a man watching pile number two like this is all about like you know it's okay to be a little independent it's okay to you know go for a walk by yourself and just look at the fall leaves changing colors you know um, if you have good weather in your area and it's a sunny day and the leaves are beautiful you know go for a walk and just experience that for half hour hour before dinner and then go back home to your family give yourself a little permission to experience the beauty and the softer things in life okay <sighs> okay so let us clarify a little bit. Oh, hello. So pile number two, that is stuck together. <clears throat> so let's see here. Oh, now that's beautiful. Twin flames, your passion ignites. Okay, so some of you are probably most definitely dealing with the soulmate right around now. Um, and I can see that. I can see that. I can see that through like this pain. You know, you have a brand new passionate beginning here with something very real. You know, you got the Empress, Queen of Cups, King of Cups. You have a power couple here. So I feel like for a lot of you dealing with a relationship, you've met your match. You guys are going to school together, you know, or you guys are going through the school of life together. Um, you'll be learning new things, that's for sure, in a good way. So I feel like for you, pile number two, the worst is over. I just feel like I need to say that. Some of you might need to hear that. What is this? Oh, yeah. And that's really beautiful, too. Huh. I like how the stars go all the way up and kind of almost cut across to the heart you know follow the stars i like that forgiveness stop focusing your energy on past events i can't make this up you guys <laughs> i really can't uh, for life is too precious to waste you create your reality by what you think dream and imagine now i love this card this is probably one of my favorite cards of this deck now. Um, that's pretty much what I've been talking about this whole reading, um, in a way. Uh, yeah, like, the worst is over, so forgive it. Forgive yourself for the judgments you might have put on them or yourself. Um, don't self-sabotage. You know, there's really good things coming your way here. So... You create your reality by what you think, dream, and imagine. So, you know, if some of you need to kind of go within, maybe practice meditation, you know, maybe withdraw. I feel like some of you might need to withdraw for a minute. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. It's okay. All right. I like it. I like it, group two. All right, group two. That's what I have for you for your pick a card reading. I hope this really helps you and... Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Hey, everybody. Welcome, witches. Y'all picked group pile three. So um, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, hit, and subscribe, and hit the bell button for me, please. Would mean a lot. You picked the rune Tawaz, which is the warrior. I like it. Uh, key words, warrior, honor, spiritual strength, preparedness, and self-sacrifice. Hmm. Magical working. 
spiritual self-discipline, achieving victory with honor, righteous success, support noble causes. Huh. That's nice. I like that. Support noble causes. Key phrases. Prepare for battle. Focus. Challenges to overcome. Self-discipline and honor. Sharpen your body, mind, and sword. Ooh-wee. All right. So, group three, you've got some, some work to do, sounds like. But it sounds to me like you're willing to take up the challenge. To me, it sounds like you're ready. Like, you're feeling like, 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 like battle, like, yeah, like you're going to do it. Like, you're just going to go for it. And like, you're like, you want to take charge and you want to like be a leader. I like it. I like it a lot. So, all right, warrior, let's see what your cards have for you. Um, that's a great card. I think a lot of you might be activists of some kind or humanitarians, veterinarians. Maybe you work with animals, animal sanctuaries. I don't know. I'm getting things like that. Black Lives Matter movement, things like that. So there might be some things in, in group three, pile three, where, you know, some of those things that you guys are experiencing are filtering through in this uh, reading. All right. So... Oh boy. All right, pile three. So you have the death card, the six of cups, the world, the seven of wands, and the five of cups. So what I'm hearing and feeling right now for you is um, you feel, you have felt the death of something. You felt, felt the grief of something. It could just be that you're really, really empathic and you're feeling sort of like the death of the world, the way everything was, you know, like everything in our entire world is completely changing. And I feel like you might be feeling that really hard. I don't get relationship vibes in this reading very much. There could be some sort of past life connection you have with someone you're dealing with. It doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic partner, um, but there's definitely a bond of some kind. Um, I also am seeing and feeling that the death of the world and the rebirth it's going through is making you feel like a child again. So in a way, what's happening in the outside world is sort of being reflected for you in your personal world, in your mini world with your friends, your family, your job, everything around you. Um, and that's, that's really sort of giving you the ability to step through the door to be a warrior and to be, uh, uh like you, you have the upper hand. So that's an important message for some of you that are watching this right now. I don't know why I need to say that. But for some of you who are like getting ready and like you have this like sort of like let's strap on my armor and go out here and do it. Like the world is telling you like you have the upper hand. So I feel like it's important, like you could even rewatch this if you want to in like a month and remember me telling you this, you have the upper hand. So whatever is going on here personally for you, I feel like it's, it's opened up a gateway for you with the world card here. It's really opened up a new area, a new journey, you know, I, I mean, look at this, the arrow is pointing forward. I didn't even see really realize that or see that in the card here but you know look at this the world is opening forward for you you are moving forward you are on a path to victory um, it doesn't mean it hasn't come without grief obviously when things die we will grieve we will mourn um, but you have two cups remaining 
So this could be you, you still have your relationship, you still have the love of your life, um, you still have your health, um, you still have maybe sanctuary somewhere in your personal life, um, or some respite, some reprieve. Um, respite, is that the right word I'm looking for? I think reprieve is the right word I'm looking for. Um, anyway, things are going well for you. Um, you're definitely a spiritual warrior on this earth. It wouldn't surprise me if you are a light worker watching this or a high empath or a star seed of some kind. Um, but a, a developed soul. You're, you're an older soul on this earth. And I think you're, you know, I think you know that. I think you have known that for some time. There, I think uh, the previous piles, I think they're finally maybe kind of figuring that out. But if you're watching this group three, I feel like you've already been in touch with that and you've already known that for a little while. Um, and this is just sort of a new trajectory for you. Um, and the, the universe and your guides and your angels and your ancestors are sort of pointing you in a direction where you are like sort of stepping forward through the world with all of your guides around you on the path forward, kind of on your spiritual path of truth. Okay. Now, I also see that because you have a white horse here, you have white flowers in the basket. You have the upper hand here. You're on higher ground from the battle. And you have a white bridge right here. Now, whenever I see white, um, whether like it's something we mount or something we can hold, that's sort of a spiritual gift. But if it's a mount specifically or something that we walk on or use to carry us forward, like a white car, a white horse, a white bridge, a white boat, um, a white broom, <laughs> you know, anything like that that can carry us forward is to me um, the path of truth. To me, that's a symbol and something I look for in my readings where I can see whether or not the person that I'm reading for is on, on their spiritual journey, on their spiritual truth. So I see that for you, <laughs> very much so, everywhere in this reading. Um, so you're on the right track. You're on your path of spiritual success and spiritual truth. Hold on tight because it might start to get like a little bit of a wild ride. You might be starting to feel that. Um, but hold on tight to your steed and you just carry on and you carry forward. Dang, B. So you have the Knight of Swords, the Three of Cups, and the Hierophant. Um... You got fives here. Wow. So this is also is about change. Obviously, you're in a position of change. You're on the path to enlightenment. The Hierophant is you. You're s s discovering balance in your spiritual truth, in your spiritual awakening. Um, and I want to tell you, you know, some people, when we awaken to our spiritual truths, we start to develop things like boundaries. We start to develop things like being a little more straightforward with our speech, not dancing around subjects quite so easily. Um, we tend to know things about people that they don't want us to know. Um, we just know them, you know, without even realizing that we know them. We just see it. So people don't always like that. People don't always like that. but. Um, it's a part of the journey. People and things and whatnot start to fall away the more we don't really need them anymore. And you will start to notice that when the universe almost sort of takes them away for you. And I feel like there might be some grief and some sadness around things like that. Maybe some friendships have been lost. Um, but what I feel you need to do is um, really just focus on your spiritual truth. Really focus on, you know, holding your sort of truth close to you. Um, run, run for it like the wind. And again, you have a steed here. <laughs> it's a motorcycle, but it's still white. You're wearing white. White, 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 white. 
white light. Like, I can't emphasize that enough. Like, you are on the spiritual path to divine success with whatever it is you're seeking or requesting. So over the next couple of months, you know, you might have to hold on tight to your steed there, but you're going to be okay. You're really going to be okay. You are definitely on a, a warrior's path, a spiritual warrior's path. Um, so let's see here. Um, I felt like I needed to pull a card from this. Um, so I feel like there was a moment in, in the reading where I said, some of you still have the love of your life. Some of you still have some reprieve with a partner or a safe place you feel you can go. That's still the case. And I felt like I needed to pull a card to maybe speak to that a little more. Um, I saw myself in you this first, the first second I laid eyes on you. Yeah. So I feel like if any of you might be wondering about the partner you're dealing with, I don't think you are, but it's always good to get some reassurance that, you know, the person you're with has your back. They're in your corner. So for those of you in a relationship, they have your back and they're in your corner. So I don't think you need to worry about that. Um, I don't think you need to worry about talking to them about whatever changes it is you want to make. I think, uh, don't be afraid. I think they're, they're, they'll back you up. They will. You know, find a good time to present your truth to them in a way that feels good. And they will be receptive. Let's close it off with one more heart card. Acceptance is the key to inner peace. At times we must accept things as they are. There is no point trying to change that which is beyond our control. Wow. Ah, look at that. So you have an angelic form here. And her, she's adorned her third eye. She's very much in tune with her heart. Yeah, so I feel like you need to get in touch with your heart. I feel like a lot of you might be experiencing the, the you know you're on the right trajectory with your, your warrior's path. Um, the way through it during times of trial are going to be to connect to your heart and letting go of things you can't control. And just like how I mentioned before, when the universe sort of takes people away for you, When the universe sort of takes people away for you, when um, friendships sort of fall away, when relationships sort of just poof, cease to exist, when jobs kind of close and then you have to find another one or things like that, um, that's the universe telling you to just let go of things that you can't control. Um, hopefully that's not too loud in the back are you done are you done sorry my cat she's she likes to she likes to scratch stuff over there so I wasn't sure if that was getting in the way of the audio um, <coughs> but yeah so acceptance is the key to inner peace. At times we must accept things as they are. Getting back on track, group three. Uh, really, I feel like that's, that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, so love yourself through this time. Don't be too critical of yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Take care of yourself. Hold on tight because shit's about to get real if, and it, if it hasn't already. It could, so, um, but you're going to be growing. You're going to be on your way to enlightenment here. So, all right, group three, that is what I have for you. 
I hope this really helps you. Please like, hit, and subscribe, and hit the bell button for me, and I will see y'all on the flip side. Bye, witches. Mwah! Um, suggest to me that there's a gateway and a doorway here for you. Train. All right.